It is the limit comparison test. Okay, again, A sub n and B sub n are bigger than zero. Otherwise, this test doesn't work. If the limit, as n goes to infinity, of the ratio of A sub n to B sub n equals L. Now, L has to be bigger than zero and finite. Um, then either both the series involving A sub n and the series involving B sub n, either they both converge or they both diverge. And I can, I can do a little hand wavy argument here too, maybe a little more than a hand wavy argument. So in, I won't call this a proof, I'll call it an indication of why this is true. So if you think about it, if you know that A sub n divided by B sub n converges to L, then doesn't that mean for really big n, whatever, that, whatever a big n is, maybe n is a million, maybe n is a billion, I don't know. I don't know how long it takes to converge. But for really big n, couldn't you say A sub n over B sub n is approximately equal to L? Isn't, isn't that what we mean when we say A sub n divided by B sub n converges to L? We mean as n gets bigger, as n goes to infinity, a sub n and divided by b sub n gets arbitrarily close to L. So I could say this. To make you guys believe this one's true, I could say uh, since a sub n divided by b sub n converges to L, a sub n divided by b sub n is approximately equal to L for large n. And I put it in quotes because that's kind of, you know, that's the hand wavy part. You know, what does that mean? But I mean, it's believable, right? I mean, that's what it means. If you pick an n, you can get arbitrarily close to L if you pick a big enough n. So wouldn't that mean I could multiply both sides of this statement by B sub n and say A sub n is approximately equal to L times B sub n? Yeah? So here's more hand waviness then. Uh, certainly then, so if the sum n goes to infinity of L times B sub n converges. Uh, let me, you know what, let me just do it with the, with the B sub n. So certainly if the sum from n equals one to infinity of uh, of B sub n converges, then so does L times the sum n equals one to infinity of L times, whoops, I brought it in too soon, of B sub n. So see, so see if you believe this statement right here. Because L is a constant, right? So if the sum involving B sub n converges, cer certainly L times the sum involving B sub n converges. But since the sum involving B sub n, we're assuming it converges here, we can just bring that L inside, and that's, that's the sum of the A sub n, isn't it? Um, or close to it, anyway. Um, so this would be equal to the sum n equals one to infinity of L times B sub n, which is approximately the sum of the A sub n. So that should hopefully make you believe it at least for the convergence case. And then, you know, if, if the sum involving B sub n diverges, then it's, it's a, and L is finite, it's not too hard also, this is a, more of the hand wavy part. It's, it's not too hard to believe that the sum, since, they're all, since A sub n is almost equal to L times B sub n, it's not too hard to believe that the sum of the A sub n diverges as well. Does that make sense? So ca all, I, all I want you guys to have is an intuitive feel for why it works. Does it converge? The sum n equals one to infinity, five n minus three, divided by n squared minus two n plus five. Okay, the trick, now, in the statement of the theorem, I'm like thinking of this guy as my a n, and remember, we want to look at an over bn, right? So that you, you have to come up with the simpler function bn, or perhaps it's simpler, right? You have to come up with the simpler formula for bn. So the trick for finding bn, well, if you take in ratio the highest power 
uh, of n that should say in the numerator of a n. And you put that in ratio to the highest power of n in the denominator of a n, that's going to be your b n. Wait, that didn't make sense. Let me show you. So before I find this ratio and take the limit of it, I need to come up with the bn. And so here's what we do. We come up with the bn by taking the highest. Now, this only works if it's a rational function. But we take the highest power of n. Actually, I lied. We can adjust it if it's not quite rational. We take the highest power of n. Oh, oh that's just n, n to the 1, just n, right? That's the highest power of n in the numerator. What's the highest power of n in the denominator? n squared, right? And so n over n squared makes 1 over n. So that's a neat trick for coming up with bn. And then if you think about the theorem, we have to take, uh, we, we have to make sure both a n and bn are positive, and that's not an issue here. You know, certainly that's positive. And then a n, which is just the given guy, is positive. And then the theorem says take the limit of a n over b n. So we, we have to do that and show that it equals L. And then we can just make our conclusion based on uh, the sum of the simpler function 1 over n. OK, so let's do this. Let's take a n over b n. This is all step one, by the way. Um, a n over b n would be, OK, 5n minus 3 over n squared minus 2n plus 5. And I'm going to divide that by, that's a n. I'm going to divide that by b n, which is 1 over n. But wouldn't you flip and multiply and get 5n minus 3 over n squared minus 2n plus 5 times n over 1? Whoops, that should say 1 right there. Okay, what happens if you distribute that n to the numerator? Multiply straight across, multiplying the 1 won't do anything. Multiply straight across n times 5n minus 3, what do you get? So remember, the division bar is like a grouping symbol, so there's an implied set of parentheses here. So you distribute this, what do you get? 5n squared minus 3n over that same denominator, n squared minus 2n plus 5. This is a n over b n, the simplified version of that. What does that converge to? It's known, right? It's, it's, a, it's a rational function. The degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator, so you don't have to show any work here. I already said that. You don't have to show it. What do you get? The ratio of what? For the limit, you get the ratio of what? Lead coefficients. So 5 over 1, or just 5. And we need that to be greater than zero. In the statement of the theorem, we need that to be greater than zero. So if you go back up to the, the statement of the theorem, here's what we just did. The thing I'm calling step one, I just found that. And I verified that, yeah, it's bigger than zero. OK, so that is what I'm going to call step one. And that's new. That doesn't look like what we did for just the comparison test. So stare at that for a minute. So all I did was I, I found my bn using that trick, and then I took an over bn, and then I used, I used the arrow notation for limit. Really what I'm saying is the limit of that an over bn, I, I don't want to write all that down again, is equal to 5, OK? But if you, if you want to use limit notation, that's how you'd do it. And you'd fill in 5n squared minus 3n for a n. And oh, actually, that's not true. Um, well, no, that's true. So you just fill in this whole thing with this formula. Five, the limit as n goes to infinity of 5n squared minus 3n divided by n squared minus 2n plus 5. And that's as n goes to infinity. So this, if you're not comfortable with the arrow notation, you could use this notation instead. And then say, oh, yeah, and that certainly is greater than 0. So that's the L. That 5 is the L. OK, that's, if you get that, then the rest of it looks like uh, what we do for just the comparison theorem. 
So now, in step two, this is gonna look just like step two from the last example. We're gonna look at the sum involving the new formula, the simpler formula, B, the Bn, is what I called it in this case. So the sum from n equals one to infinity of one over n. Oh, I know what that does. What does that do? It diverges, why? That sum diverges because it's a p-series P equals one, which is, okay, this seems dumb to say, but humor me, less than or equal to one, right? That's the condition. It ha and it does, for, for it to diverge, P has to be less than or equal to one. In this case, it equals one, but I put, put the whole condition in there, the less than or equal to. Okay, now, the limit, step three is gonna look the same too, because, because the limit comparison test says, as goes the sum of BN, so goes the sum of, of AN. So we just determined that the sum of what we call Bn diverges. So what's the original series, which is the sum of An? What's do? What does that series do? Diverges by. Yeah, you have to put that word limit in there. By, so diverges by limit comparison test. LCT will shorten that too. Okay. So the main difficulty with this one is step one is a little more intricate than it was for just the comparison test. But once you get past step one, it looks the same format wise, the proof, and this really is a proof, looks the same. The proof that it diverges in this case looks the same. Um, so step one, come up with, a, come up with your BN, show AN over BN equals some, po the limit of that equals some positive constant and then step two and step three write themselves. Because the idea is you're gonna know what the sum of the new function does in step one. 